Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is going to be another Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, in this video, we're going to talk about the lucky 12%. Those people that pull their sacred shards during the double event, which starts tomorrow, Friday, um, the chances will go up to 12% to get a legendary. And we're going to talk about the top 20 legendaries, in my opinion, um, and it is only my opinion, it has not been verified by outside sources. Um, but yeah, top 20 legendaries that you could pull, which would dramatically change your account. So we're going to get onto that. Before we do, there's going to be two chances for you guys to win raid gems. The first one is if you download World War Doe via my link and get to level 3. If you get to level 3, you can then come and post in my Discord in this World War Doe section. You just have to be level 3 and post your account here. Join one of the Hades Minions groups, the clans, and you will be in the running for one of lot, uh, five lots of 540 gems. That will end at the end of January, and then we'll draw it early February. So that's one way. The second way, and doesn't need World War Doe, is for you to come and join me on stream on Friday night, tomorrow night. Um, so 8 p.m. UK time, 3 p.m. EST. Kind of work your, your own numbers out from that. Me versus Lady H, champion versus champion. Basically what we're going to be doing is pulling people's shards, but we're going to go head to head. So one person versus another, whoever gets the most legendaries wins and the loser will get a forfeit. Whether that be me or Lady H or the person we're teamed up with, both of us will get forfeits. It should be a lot of fun, something a bit different. So come and join us on stream. And again, I'll ping my Twitch details below. Come and follow that channel and you'll see when we go live. And five people in that stream on Friday will get 540 gems as a free kind of giveaway for a bit of fun. So, let's get into the top 20 legendary champions. Um, this is tough. This is tough because everything's totally situational. It's all based on your account. It's based on what you need to clear, what type of stuff you need to do. But I'm going to call out 20, which I think are all game changers, and I'll tell you where I would use them. So, let's start. Let's start with someone who was a fusible champion or a fragment summon i think it was but creela witch arm so creela then why so strong a couple of reasons really i mean the the annoying thing with creela is you have to book her out you have to book this a3 to get the full benefit uh sorry the a2 because if you don't book her a2 there's a 20 percent chance that they won't even do the ally attack which is annoying and totally dumb from uh playerian's point of view I see what they're doing. They obviously want to sell books, but that, that's annoying. But anyway, if you do get this booked out, she's probably the strongest one. And the reason being is she gives you increased crit rate, increased attack. All of her hits hit really hard. She hits like a beast. She's got good base stats. Um, and you can get her, her abilities rotating in a way on clan boss so that you can constantly keep up things like crit rate, increased attack, and you're getting your ally attacks off as well. Um... She puts out mini shields. She can kind of be used anywhere in the game. But for me, she's the best clan boss ally attack champion. So she comes in at number 20. At number 19, uh, this probably will surprise a few. So uh, I'll get ready for the flame. Fushan. Mr. Underrated. This guy is an absolute beast. He's seriously strong. Like... Big speed aura in all battles. Don't underestimate this aura. It's so good. Um, A2 with, when booked, 35% chance to stun. And it hits twice. So 35% chance twice to stun. And it hits really hard. It's a great ability, this one. Um, in terms of locking out enemies on waves, places like Finites, this is awesome. Dragon, this is awesome. Uh, the arena, it's it's disgusting. Um, when we're talking about Doom Tower, if you're struggling to get through those waves where they've got all of those um, freeze champions and stuff, just stun them up. This is such a great move. And then he comes in with this four hitter here as well with a big decreased defense move. Fushan still goes in a lot of... Um, experimental finite teams for me and I've got a massive roster extra hits here as well in his a1 if he gets lucky but this guy can hit he's an absolute beast so Fushan comes in 19 um, 18 then we're going to be rolling into one of the burners Ignatius 
Um, one of the hardest hitting AOE uh, decrease, sorry, defense based champions in the game. So this move here is A3, smacks. This move here is A2, smacks as well. They're both AOE. They're both based on his defense. So you need to get his defense number up and his crit and crit damage up. But he will hit seriously hard. So because of that, he's extremely good at nightmare campaign farming. One of the best. Um, throw him in some lifesteal gear, high damage, and he will farm nightmare campaign all day long. Um, he's also got a stun on his A1. If you bring his damage down, He's got an HP burn that can't be resisted. So on Spider, bring his damage down. You don't want to kill Spiderlings if you're doing this strategy. And all you want to do is get those burns out there. And then the Spiderlings cook the main Spider. Really good strat. Also, his kind of, um, yeah, his ability has gone up in the world because Sorath needs HP burn to die. And we know that Sorath's um, resistances, when you get higher in the tower, start to spike to silly numbers. This guy doesn't care. He's like, resistances. I don't care about resistances. I'm putting the burn on anyway, and I'm doing it right now. So this guy goes straight into my kind of top tier team for Sorath, and he is. He's in my team. So yeah, Ignatius, absolute beast, great champion. Uh, next one up then is, it's always been one of my favorites. He's always going to appear on these lists because I love him, but he's slipping down the list. I don't know if that's fair or not. He hits like a freight train. This guy smacks like you wouldn't believe with his A1 and A2. Both crazy hitters. I love him in clan boss teams when you can fit him in. Um, he got, he's got a decrease attack, one of the better ones in the game. So 75% chance on an A1. Um, it's not 100% chance, so you do need to be careful that you can get it on. And you know, if you're running like an ally attack or a counter attack team, you should be fine. If you're not, be careful because he might, he might not keep it on the whole time. But that A1... I've got him hitting for like 160, 200k on an A1. He's, he's a beast. Um, he also brings an increased defense on his A2, which empowers his A1 and his A2. Very, very cool. Uh, he's also got a passive here that if he kills something, anything, he'll revive one of your team. Makes him super good for faction wars, for barbarians. Also good generally as a carry because it feels like you're out of the game. All of a sudden, he gets one of the enemy down and he picks one of yours up it's a two-way swing and you're back in the game so yeah ultan beast mode great aura as well great base stats love this champion now this is where it gets a bit interesting because we have got someone coming in above ultan who basically is kind of like the same champion but in my opinion a bit stronger so he also has got a decrease attack ability books books it so that you can get it to a three turn cooldown which means you can keep it up for all of the important fight uh, part of the fight for clan boss so it does the same as what altan's doing here um the cool thing though is that he brings a three turn increased defense on a three turn cooldown so it's up all the time he also brings this crazy passive that increases your defense by 10% of his defense as he enters the dungeon or the, the fight. So if he's got 4k, everyone gets 400 as you enter the fight. Doesn't change after that, which is huge as well. It's really big. And then um, he's got an ability to decrease buffs on an A1, which is okay. But yeah, this guy, huge base defense. He hits kind of the same as Altan. They're basically hitting for the same numbers, but his utility is slightly better albeit if you get that kind of three percent chance that this resists on the uh, decrease attack you've got no way of coming back whereas with altan you might get a re that cheeky resist which you hate but then on his next turn he's got a chance to put it out there again so there is more risk with iron brago but for me he's just tipping above because i think with this passive he's more useful in general content and i also think with this um a3 in general content outside of clan boss it also brings a cheeky little provoke which um ultan doesn't bring so you know they've kind of got their they're almost on a par they just they're just good for different content but these two both beastly um so moving up the order then we've got razin razin um has got stronger with a fix to his ai so he will no longer do A3 against Clan Boss. 
Brilliant. Which means he's A1 in more, which means he's doing tons more damage. This guy hits like crazy. If you build his crit up, his crit damage up, he has got crazy multipliers, especially on that A1 um, and his A2. So, you know, on Clan Boss, you've got decreased defense and weaken, and any content really. Great for Spider to soak up the damage and sometimes put out some abilities that you want. Um, great for Fire Knight with a triple hit A1, turn meter control on his A3, decreased defense and weaken on his A2. It's like his kit is super good. Um, could be used in the arena. This A3 can absolutely like one shot waves if you get it set up right. Um, Great for this faction because Lizardmen struggle. So yeah, Razin is a fusible champion, so everybody can get him eventually. And I would say, if you haven't got him already, work on it because he's super good. Really, really strong. So Razin comes in then, number 15. Let's move up, 14. Again, somebody got a buff really because his AI was changed. Nephril. People overlook Nephril. And I'll tell you what, he's incredible. He's got such a crazy kit. Firstly, this is a, a part that people don't really know about him. He's got really high multipliers. If you want him to be your nuke arena champion, okay, he's not a trunder, but he can smack. He can really smack. And he's got two AoEs. So he's got an AoE on his A2, and he's got AoE on his A3. Both of them hit and do stuff. So to hit hard and do stuff at the same time is really cool. Uh, he's got AoE chance to stun on his A2. Um, if he doesn't stun, he at least decreases their speed, which is really cool. So if you're thinking about Spider, he's stunning a bunch of the Spiderlings and he's decreasing the speed of the main Spider. Brilliant. He does the same uh, decreased speed on Finite, on Ice Golem, all those places. Like It's really, really strong. Um, if you're struggling to get through waves in Doom Tower, this guy is like a, a one-man band of control controlling the enemy so they don't get a turn because when this goes off a bunch of them aren't getting a turn and then when this goes off he's decreasing everybody's turn meter by 75 percent which basically lets everyone else on your team have another go you know it's super super strong and then the buff recently for him was his a1 um is the only move he's going to use now in clan boss which is exactly what you want he's going to throw out a ton of poison for you Probably the highest poison potential of any champion now in the game. Just just raw poison, um, which is really good. And because it's a three hitter as well, you put him with Giant Slayer and he's doing a ton of damage at the same time with Giant Slayer procs. This guy should not be underestimated. Really good. So Nephil comes in then, number 14. Let's go 13. And it starts to get difficult now to kind of like pick between people. But 13... I've pulled out Ray. She has got, I think, the third hardest nuke in the game on an AoE. Third hardest nuke with this A2. So as soon as there's debuffs against an enemy, it hits 50% harder. If you book it, it also hits 30% harder. Now, I, wasn't, I didn't really understand how the multipliers worked against books until recently, until I'd seen some of the game code. And what this basically does is it takes your damage, this ability here, the 50%, takes your damage, whatever it would have been, and just times it by 1.5, which makes sense. But I didn't realize that the books basically do the same thing. It's a straight multiplier. So this would take your damage and just times it by 1.3. So these two things coming in together are what make her multiplier so damn strong. Now you think to yourself, okay, that's a pretty nice move, but does she have anything else? Yes. Speed in dungeons, 33% of your base speed. So you're going to gain another 30 to 40 speed per champion. Probably more like about 30 speed per champion. Um, she's also got this A3, AoE again, and it smacks. Um, removes all buffs. Where is that going to be strong, you're thinking? I'll tell you where, everywhere. Um, Doom Tower especially now, people are just throwing buffs on like crazy. Arena, if you're trying to get through those waves of, of kind of silly arena opponents like your Duchesses and your Seafies and stuff, she'll just come in there and remove all of that stuff and then has got a 70% chance to freeze them for the fun of it. Absolutely crazy. It is a six-turn cooldown. It's super long. It hits hard, but um, it's a great move. And then similarly with Faction Wars, she will just cruise you through Faction Wars. And then just to round it off, you know, think, you think to yourself, does she have any more? Yes. Decreased defense, AoE, 50% chance to land it. 
A1. All of the moves are AoE. So, you know, if you're being crafty, you could throw in some sort of control gear as well, like stun sets and stuff. But for me, raw power, raw damage. Make sure she's got enough accuracy to land this freeze and decrease defense. So you only need a couple of hundred and then just get her as higher damage potential, you know, like throughput as you can because she smacks. Um, great champion, a lot of fun. So Ray, let's go for the next one up. And this is going to be a free champion. What a great login reward. Scylla the Drakes. She is absolutely amazing. She's kind of like Fushan, actually. She's really similar style kits, but slightly better. Doesn't hit as hard, um, but she's got the same kind of AoE stun. Exactly the same, in fact. Um, so she's going to lock out a bunch of champions. Again, in Doom Tower, if you're struggling. In Faction Wars, if you're struggling. On Waves, in Dungeons, if you're struggling. Bring in Scylla the Drakes. This ability here is super good. You can also throw the mastery on to increase the chance to stun by 5% if you want. I don't personally do that, but I know a lot of people do. Um, I prefer just to get the, the extra damage from Warmaster. But yeah, whatever you want to do. Make sure you've got enough accuracy to land the stun. Make sure you've got enough accuracy to land this decreased speed. It also has got a chance to reduce turn meter. So against Spider, against Finite, against Ice Golem, they're great. Against Faction War bosses, this is brilliant. Against Doom Tower bosses, is very cool. Um, she's... She's also got this kind of protection, so she'll revive an ally and then give them ally protection. The amount of times I do a takeover on Spider for people, and this is clutch. Someone's tanking the Spiderlings for you. They go down. You think the run's over. Seal picks them back up again and then throws ally protection on them. And then at the same time, as long as you get her turns rotating fast, she heals them every time she gets a go. And she puts increased speed out on you know on random allies. Like there's so much in her kit, it's crazy. She is super good, and it's a really great reward when you get her for your account. Make sure you max her out. Um, okay, next one. Again, this might be uh, controversial. So new champion Roxam. A lot of people are not that impressed with this guy. I've got to throw him in the mix. I have to throw him in the mix because of his abilities. Now. His AI is a bit wonky, which is annoying. Um, if you put him alongside somebody else that veils him, he's, he would be like top five. Okay, He's the hardest hitting champion that does an AoE decrease defense and weaken, firstly. Um, you can book it up to 100%. So attacking a whole wave and being able to drop their defense and weaken them in the same ability is godlike. It's a godlike ability, and most champions that do that are void legendaries. This guy is not void, so he's got to be in this list. But he tries to do this first on an auto, so he'll do it on a single target, which is dumb. It's really dumb. If he did his A2 first, then it would be much stronger. But the rest of his kit is also good. So attacks one enemy and fills his champion's turn meter by 50%. If he did this first, it would be super good. Or unless, like if his AI just said, do I have a veil on or not? Yes or no. If I don't have one, I'm going to A2. If I do have one, I'm going to A3. That's what, that's what his, his um, kit should do. But he is super strong. He's got some of the best buffs in the game. Um, he's got turn meter control. He's got stuns. He's got the best um, way to increase your damage from all of your teams in his kits. He's got to be in there. Um, I just hope they fix his AI so that he really gets his proper potential. If you pair him with a Duchess or someone like that, then this guy's potential is through the roof. Um, but yeah, Roxanne has got to come in there because this also hits hard compared to his, his kind of the people he's up against in that category. So coming on then, we're on to top 10. Number 10. Again, this, maybe he's low. Maybe this is low, but Bad Elkazar cannot not feature on this list. What a champion. Solo's Dragon, no problem. Solo's uh, Ice Golem, probably, I think. <laughs> no problem. He'll do a lot anyway. He has got heals on his A1, AoE hits. He's got poisons and continuous heals on his A2, plus a full team cleanse. And he's got a passive that makes everyone in your team do more damage. Unfortunately, bad elves don't stack. So two bad elves won't make you do 40% more damage. But I tell you now, this guy... Is just such a good all-rounder. 
whether it's your clan boss team, whether it's your um, dungeon teams, whether it's your uh, faction wars, Doom Tower, wherever you want to put him, this guy finds a space because he helps everyone. He helps your damage dealers do more. He keeps your team alive and, and cleansed of debuffs. And it's on a really good cooldown as well. And he has got heals. Like, he's just heals and damage. So good. So good. And the cool thing about L is you can literally gear him so many different ways. You want him in reflex gear to get this back uh, really often? You can do it. You want him in uh, lifesteal gear to make sure that he doesn't drop against, I don't know, something like Dragon? Fine. You want to get his resistance and accuracy up against Dragon so he's not taking debuffs and can solo the whole thing? Fine. No worries. You want him clan boss? You can do it. Like, if you want to take your whole team out of lifesteal gear in clan boss and do more damage, throw Bad L in. He'll be your cleanser and he'll be um, the person that keeps your team alive for the whole fight. I used to do it all the time. Really strong champion. So he comes in at number 10. Let's go number 9 then. Number 9, yikes. Xavier. So Xavier is responsible for some of the fastest speed runs in the game. If you're talking Dragon, she's in there. Finite, she's in there. Um, if you're talking Magma Dragon, she's in there. She is absolute beast mode. So she just pops poison, basically. She's got this pop poison ability on her A3. Uh, A3. She's got lay poisons on her A2. And she lays poisons on her A1. In the clan boss, they fixed her. She only does A1 now, which means she's really good in unkillable teams, which is great. Um, she does have a, a low base defense. So I wouldn't recommend throwing her into just any old team unless you can get a defense up for clan boss. But yeah, she's an absolute beast. As long as you can set her up with some poisons to pop, even if you can't, she hits really hard as well. So you can get her damage up and she will be cracking people over the head. Um, really strong champion. As I say, responsible for a lot of the speed runs. I'd love to get her to play around with her. But yeah, definitely worth building out. Also worth noting, um, this is some work that Stu Damien did actually. You don't need accuracy to pop poison. Okay, so if you just want to build a full glass cannon nuka and not use her for poison, you don't need any accuracy to pop poison, but you do need accuracy, obviously, to land your A1 and A2. So it depends how you're going to use it, but you could literally run a naked level 1, and this ability here on her A3 would do exactly the same amount of damage in terms of blowing up poison. Not for the hit, but for the poison pop, it would do the same damage. Um, okay, so that was Xavier, number 9. Number 8, then, is going to be... A high elf, Lissandra. So Lissandra, super fast. She's got the best turn meter manipulation in the game. What's king in this game? Speed is king in this game, and she controls it better than anyone else. She fully depletes her turn meter here. Free turn cooldown if you book it. She increases your speed and turn meter, decreases the enemy's turn meter on the A3. She's got um, ability on her A1, which transfers debuffs from her. This could be pretty cool. Um, let's say the Magma Dragon decides to hex your Lissandra. You know what she'll do? She'll throw the hex straight back on the Magma Dragon and he'll take a ton of damage. It's really cool. Um, really cool for Dragon as well. And then she's got this speed in all battles aura, which is great. Massive base speed. She's just super good. Um, you know, Agref, she's she's killer. Bordoff, she's killer. Um, just because of that turn meter control. Um, same really with Soraf, I guess. But, you know, when you're talking about places like Finite, Spider, Ice Golem, all those places where you, where you want to control turn meter, she is in there doing it better than anyone else. Okay, then. So we can't do a list like this without talking about Marta. Marta, one of only three AoE counterattack champions in the game. Super high base stats. Kind of low base speed, though, which lets her down a bit. Um, she has got a really easy to book kit actually she if you're lucky if if you're lucky you land one book in this and you're like yes if you're unlucky you just spent a month's wages booking everything else to eventually get this but she's worth booking she's worth investing in the a1 gives you decreased defense as well which is really cool a2 full team counter attack and increased defense super cool um and then the a3 hits really hard like I used to run her in my finite team for a speed run because this ability was half shot in the whole enemy wave. Um, plus it throws provokes out there. She can be your spiderling tank um, provoking them all up. She can be 
your kind of carry through dungeons. She can be your clan boss specialist. She can come into Doom Tower with the provokes, with the decrease attack, with the counter attack and increased defense and help you get through those waves. Super strong for faction wars. She's still a top tier champion. And yeah, Marta comes in next. So we're on to the big boys now. Um, and the first one on my list is going to be... Da, 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 Kaimar. So Prince Kaimar. What a champion this is. What a champion. So versatile, this guy. He's an absolute game changer. So he has got generally a good kit. So he's got a, a speed arena... Um, Aura, and it's the second fastest in the game. So if you want to bring him in for your speed champion, um, you can do it. He can come in and be your turn meter filler. Fills all turn meters except himself by 20%. It's okay. Um, the crazy part of this skill, though, is it re resets all cooldowns of all skills. So you can either make him run fastest and get your team moving faster. It's probably a, an inefficient way to use this skill, but sometimes it's it's the right thing to do, by the way. Or you can get him to go slower than everyone else. And after they've used their abilities, the big ones, he resets them all, speeds them up, and then get around to them again, which is, is super cool. He's also got a full clean out of buffs on the enemy. And he sleeps them. 100% chance to sleep them if you've got the accuracy. It's really cool. If you think about Doom Tower, Faction Wars, Arena, where you're up against it, everyone's throwing all those buffs out. He's like, no, I'm going to clean those off, and then you're going to take a nap. And whilst you're napping, someone's going to come in and smack you over the head. Really cool. The fact that he places this sleep is actually really good because you can throw a mastery in the mix. Uh, who's got it? Who's got it? You can throw a mastery in the mix called Opportunist. When someone's asleep, you do 12% more damage. So if you're using Kaimo in your arena team, it's really cool to use that mastery. Um, same if you're using him in like faction wars and stuff. You're, the rest of your team coming in with that mastery, straight out 12% more damage. Times your damage by 1.12. That's the way it works. Uh, he's also got a poison on his A1 if he crits. So it's, it's in your control. It'll, he'll always land if you've got 100% crit rate. And it's another AoE ability. He's just super cool. Really fun. Um, and he looks awesome as well. Okay, so we're moving into the top bunch. Um, actually, we're staying here. Number five, Duchess. Again, what a champion. Especially now with Doom Tower in the mix. Like, she was already crazy. You throw Doom Tower in the mix, and you've got Tormund's freezing you up, you know, a bunch of debuffs coming at you, and she's like, if I go first, I'm going to put block debuffs out there, and then we're all just chilling. We're just chilling with the block debuffs on. I'm throwing your attack up at the same time. Oh, by the way, I'm going to throw a veil on you at the same time, which reduces all the damage you're going to take. And if that's not enough, I'm also going to reduce it further with my passive. It's literally like that. Whew. Right, who's next? Who's next? She's crazy. Um, throw her with a seer as well. She's got three uh, buffs to rip off on everyone. Just totally bonkers. I love this champion. Um, shield on her A1. She's got to revive all allies on her A3. Super cool champion. And those that she revives, she hides with a veil. She's got a speed aura in all battles. Great base stats. Duchess comes in number five. No problem at all. Number four. This is probably just like one of those personal favorites. Should he be number four? I think he should. I think he should. Um, let's find him. Michald. I mean, for one, he he hits hard, he smacks hard. He used to be the Vault Guard. Uh, the, the Vault Guard, he was rubbish. Terrible champion. And then they buffed him, and they buffed him hard. Now he comes in with this A2, which speeds your team up, increases crit damage, fears the enemy, and puts Leech out. So much going on in this A2. Free turn cooldown if you book it. He then, it then like synergizes really well with the A1. When there's an enemy under leech, it AoEs, basically. It hits anyone who's got that, that debuff out there. So it just smacks really hard. He brings tons of utility. Because he gets an extra turn after using his A2, it's actually as if it's on a two-turn cooldown. 
which is very unique. It means you can keep increased speed up on your whole team the whole time. It enables a lot of the um, crazy comps for clan boss. A bit like Seeker, this guy does the same. Super cool champion. It's A3, absolutely nukes as well. And it also has got 100% chance of stealing all buffs from someone before he goes. It's crazy. Damage increases by 50% against targets that have got no buffs. He smacks. Um, really fun champ. Really good champion. Such a cool buff on him. I wish I'd do more of that type of buffage on these damage dealers. So he comes in then, number four. Number three. Someone I want. <laughs> she, she could easily be number one because she's so unique. If you're talking about damage tiers for hitting, you've got like weak, average, strong, godlike. She is literally a whole tier above. Her damage output is a whole tier in status above anyone else in the game, especially for Arena. Um, I'm not surprised. She has been working out. Look at those legs. She deserves all she gets. But in all honesty, she's kind of broken because there's not really a composition in the game that can withstand her damage, which for me means it's a bit broken. But that's probably because I'm envious. I don't have her. But yeah, AoE damage on her A3. Don't put any accuracy on her if you want her to smack because she gets a double hit if she doesn't land her abilities. It's a really weird mechanic, but basically all the damage comes if she gets the double hit. If you want to use her somewhere else other than the arena, because you're insane, um, it might be that you're struggling to clear spider. Then you can actually put accuracy on her kit and um, she'll land a bunch of HP burns, which is also a really cool ability. But you don't want to hit in so hard then. You need to change your build completely. A bit like Ignatius, you need to bring all her damage out and just build her accuracy up. So you build her in a different way. Um, but she's also got another AoE hit um, on her A2. It's not as hard. And she's got a stun chance on her A1, which is pretty cool. Um, honestly, though, she's all about smacking people into the ground, into dust with this mallet. And she's the best in the game at doing it. So there you go. Trunda. Can I get a Trunda at the weekend, please? I've really asked a lot. Okay, then. Number two is going to be my buddy. My personal favorite champion at the moment. This guy's so much fun. <laughs> He's so much fun. He smacks his way through waves. You think to yourself, he doesn't have an AoE. He doesn't need an AoE. What he does is single target hits and he goes again and goes again and goes again. He's got a reset on his A1. If he kills someone, gets another turn. Um, is it in his passive? Attacks one enemy. Grants an extra turn and resets the cooldown of this champion's holy skill if he kills someone. Yeah. So basically, if you, if you kind of weaken the wave a little bit, he comes in, smacks him, goes again. Smacks him, goes again. Smacks him, goes again. In Doom Tower... He can basically clear whole waves if you get him set up right. In, uh, I use him for exactly that in Finite, Ice Golem. And then you think to yourself, well, that's a cool A1. Yeah, it is. But his A2 is an absolute shredder. It's a nuke. It's the hardest hitting ability in the game against um, PvE content, against bosses, basically. Um, enemy max HP ability, and it, ma uh, it goes even bigger with his passive. Each attack... 30% chance of increasing the duration of all debuffs. Yeah, fine. Damage inflicted by each attack increases by 30% if the enemy's current HP is over 50. So this guy, I've had him one shot in the spider, no problem. Um, he basically one shots the ice golem. If you set him up with crazy nukes, he can smack the finite into the ground as well. Doom Tower bosses, guess what? They've got high HP. He's going to smack them hard as well. Literally, this guy can come against any boss and you're thinking, well... What is Achilles' heel? Where's he bad? Clan boss? No. Clan boss, he smacks super hard. And then his first part of his passive here, the chance to increase the duration of all debuffs, just makes him have genuine utility for clan boss as well. This guy can play anywhere. And for me, he's super fun. I love it. Um, so that's number two. Coming in at number one. 
as I've gone through this, I've spotted one guy that I should have called out, by the way. And I don't know where he, he should fit, but I didn't call out Kandrafon. And he's one of the hardest. He's, he's kind of like the number two to Trunda. So I'm just going to call him out because he should be in there as well. He should probably be coming in around 10. And I missed him. A2 smack. A1 smack. Hide himself and increase his damage here. And a super cool passive. So Kandrafon, sorry, my friend. You should have been in the list. And I, I missed you out. I'm sure there's others like that. Comment below if I've missed others like that. He should have absolutely been in the list. He's a cool champion. I actually misread my sheet. I got one more to squeeze in uh, as number two. I did a little arrow pointing out it's too small. Draco. He almost didn't get in the, sh in the list because I wrote it too small. What a champion Draco Morph is. What a legendary champion. Again, actually, one of the champions that used to be a vault god back in the day. They buffed him and they buffed him hard really hard and it's why we always kind of say if you can get a legendary champion get one if you can get away with uh well not if you can get away never feed one unless it's like you've got seven dupes or something never feed a legendary because you never know if they're going to get the draco treatment draco used to sit in people's vaults he was shockingly bad now he's got an aoe decrease defense and weaken a bit like what i said with roxam this guy places it, which means it's going on everywhere. Doesn't matter if he's the wrong affinity. It's happening. You're taking it. You're taking it on the chin. Free turn cooldown if you can book it. He's also got poisons on his A2. Four poisons for free turns. Super good. If you want to run him with someone like a Xavier or an Elenaro to blow, blow up poisons, he's actually really good for that because he puts it on for free turns. And their poison blow up, explosion with Karam, same guy, same sort of ability. Um... It blows up per tick. It doesn't work on Clan Boss, unfortunately, but it works everywhere else. So if you're trying to blow up the Magma Dragon, poison on Karam, explosion, go and get a cup of tea, job done. Um, he's also got a really cool A1. So for every debuff on the enemy, he hits harder. On Clan Boss, my Draco's hitting for like 160k and A1, sometimes more. Um, good base stats, great, ba uh, great champion. Can use him literally anywhere in the game and he's top tier probably his weakest place is the arena but for most people that don't have like stacked rosters he's first on your team sheet in the arena <laughs> he's crazy good crazy good definitely worth uh investing everything you've got into that guy literally like he's the guy if you're thinking do i need to remortgage the house to buy the books get on the phone to the bank get the remortgage done come back book him out and be happy with your life Let's move on. Valk. She still comes in as my number one. And it's been some time since I've done this type of list. And she still comes in as my absolute best champion in the game. Because she's so versatile. She will keep a team alive for so long with her shield. On her A2. Every time she does this counter attack ability. You kind of need to book it if you can. But her shield is based on her defense number. And it scales infinitely. If you had 20,000 defense your shield would be the equivalent of the 20,000. It scales until the end of time. Um, I would suggest trying to get a defense up around 6K minimum to really get the most out of her. But every time she does it, she hits at the same time and she puts a massive shield on your team and they all gain counterattack. What an ability that is. And you're thinking to yourself, well, great. Is that only for clan boss? No, 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 no. She hits really hard. You can get her in finite, smack him with that move and protecting your team. And then against the actual finite boss, when they've got counter attack on, he hits, you remove basically his whole shield. It's really cool. Um, in Ice Golem, it's a bit more risky, but for the waves, it's super good. And for the boss, as long as you're not hitting too hard on your A1s and triggering a load of retribution hits, it's really useful. Um, in the arena, she's got this passive that this champion's turn meter will be increased by 10% each time an enemy places a buff. Enemy champions will have theirs decreased by 10% for each buff they receive. A lot of people overlook this passive. She's actually top tier in the arena. If you're fighting against a Sifi, Sifi puts three buffs on everyone in their team. If you've got enough accuracy on your Valk, you push all of their turn meter back 30%, which basically lets your whole team have a turn before the enemy have a turn. It's really strong, this passive. So... Valk comes in. She's also got this decreased turn meter on her A1, which people, again, just kind of overlook, um, which makes it 
really good um, for generally for like faction war, Doom Tower, Arena content where people are going to have buffs. But yeah, super good champion, crazy base stats. She's coming out as my number one. Um, there you go, guys. Don't forget the chances to win gems. Tomorrow night on my stream or through World War Do, if you download load via the link below uh, here and post in my Discord when you hit level three. That's been a marathon. I've been Hell Hades. I'll catch you later.